Grizzly bears are one of the most ferocious and dangerous animals in the world. The disasters occurred when one guy tried to make friends with these killers after regularly camping in their region without any security measures, which has led to the deaths of more than 180 people in recent years. And one guy, who just had a camera with him, inadvertently captured the moment when his ferocious friend suddenly attacked him, killing both him and his fiance. As a rule, they prefer to stay away from people and fight only when they need to protect food, their puppies or their territory. But other people like Timothy Treadwell, A.K. the Grizzly Man, go out of their way to find them and invade their territory. Timothy has always loved animals. Even when he was a little boy and even in childhood and adolescence, he had a pet squirrel. After 13 years of research, he published a book among grizzlies living with wild bears in Alaska, which is based on his discoveries. During this time, the bears got used to him, and according to his own words, he was allowed to touch them and play with their puppies. He said his positive interactions with the bears were based on a mutual sense of trust and respect. In addition, Timothy took tourists on unofficial excursions that brought them closer to animals, something that was never allowed by parks. He was considered risky because he refused to install any electric fences around his camps or wear bear spray, claiming that because of their close friendship, bears would never harm him. Timothy, despite their fears, no longer took bear protection with him, and he soon discovered that his connection with these bears could quickly deteriorate. Timothy and his girlfriend, Amy Heward, went to Cat Maney Heward, went to Cat Mai National Park in Alaska in October 2003. They were warned against setting up camps in the region at this time of year because there was not enough food. And the bears were preparing for the upcoming winter hibernation, consuming everything they could, preparing for winter. The purpose of the trip was to see one of Timothy's favorite female brown bears and make sure that she is healthy and prepared for the upcoming winter. Despite the fact that Amy was very afraid of bears and just wanted to go home, she persisted because she understood how important bears were to her partner. The bear tracked down a handful of bears during the journey, but Timothy soon discovered that most of the bears he was familiar with had already gone into hibernation while there were also a few unknown animals. Even though the thought of being surrounded by bears who didn't know him confused him a little, he made the decision to stay and set up camp with Amy. On October 5, the two were setting up their camera to get additional footage of the bears. The installation was almost finished. The camera was on and recording sounds, but the lens cap was still closed, so there were no current images. When Amy sets up the equipment inside the tent, a soft noise of raindrops is heard. Amy shouts at Timothy and asks if he's still there, since she can't hear him. Then the screams begin. Timothy was yelling at Amy to get out of the tent and walk away. Amy enters the tent and starts yelling at Timothy to pretend to be dead, to convince the bear to leave him alone, as a huge 28-year-old male grizzly tears him apart. This seems to have worked for a while, as the bear can be heard arguing whether the animal has really disappeared. Amy is said to have reached Timothy during this period to heal his wounds, which were unknown at the time. However, she was forced to flee when the bear reappeared and attacked Timothy once more. When Timothy realizes that pretending to be dead is no longer an option, he begins to worry. He begs Amy to hit the bear with anything, so she takes a frying pan and hits the animal on the head. He was fully conscious the entire time he was being devoured alive by the animal he loved and did not experience any shock throughout the attack. With the exception of periodic growling and grunting, the bear remained calm. Throughout this struggle, the only audible sounds were Timothy's desperate attempts to escape. His groans of pain and the unattractive sound with which his body was carried out of the tent through the mud. Unfortunately, Amy still hadn't left. She was in shock and in a state of complete paralysis because of the horror she had experienced. She had just experienced her worst nightmare and was already afraid of bears. She had no idea how to return to civilization. 
and was unfamiliar with the region that Timothy had brought to the park. On the recording, she starts screaming for no reason. When she realized what she had just seen in her predicament, she screamed like a wounded animal. Unfortunately, the bear immediately returned to her to do his job. After hearing her screams, and Amy was also fatally mauled by the same monster, Willie Fulton, an air taxi pilot, flew to Kayleigh the next morning to pick up the couple and take them somewhere. When Willie screamed, he thought he saw Timothy slapping the tarp to get his attention. However, when he turned around, he didn't see anything. He decided to climb this route, but soon turned back, feeling that something was wrong. When he approached his plane, he turned around and saw something that froze his blood in his veins. A huge, menacing-looking brown bear, recently descended from the path he had recently walked, stared at him through the fog. He hurriedly jumped back into his plane and took off, intending to scare the bear with the engine and let Timothy and Amy pass without touching him. When a group of rangers arrived, Willie led them along the route leading to the camp. Climbing up, they saw several bears, but since they did not pay attention to them, they were able to continue their journey without incident. One of the rangers suddenly screamed, warning the others about the animal which was only 20 feet away from them. They started shouting at the bear, trying to scare him away, but it quickly became obvious that he was aware of their presence did not feel intimidated and aggressively followed them. Each of the three rangers opened fire on the bear, firing a total of 21 shots. The bear was shot before they stopped firing. They went to the tent camp where they saw two tents of Timothy and Amy torn apart and covered with a significant amount of dirt. The rangers cleared some of the manure in front of the door and found Amy's corpse, her fingers digging through the trash. The bear buried her, preparing for the upcoming winter. She seemed to be blissfully asleep while they cleaned up the remaining dirt, if not for the obvious fact that the bear ate almost all of her. They were shocked, but unwavering in their search for Timothy. Even though they were losing hope that he was still alive, they searched the surrounding area and found his remains hidden all over the forest. The ultrasound results showed that there were clothes and human remains in the bear's stomach, which proves that it was the bear that killed and ate the couple. We will never be able to determine if the younger bear played any role in the deaths of Timothy and Amy, since he has already been eaten by other bears. <laughs>